in the days of old. Gods are supernatural beings with super abilities and believes that they cannot be defeated by ordinary humans. But is that so? Let's take a look at these myths and legends from Europe and Africa. In the days of old, in a town called Lydia in Greece, there lived a girl called Arachne, who was famous for her skills in weaving. Everyone admired her, and Arachne was always boastful of her skills in weaving, claiming that there was no one else in the world who could weave like her, not even Athena, the goddess of skills. When Athena heard these words, she got disappointed and decided to disguise as an old lady, and she appeared in the front of Arachne. She told Arachne, My dear, I overheard you boasting that you can weave better than the goddess of skills. Don't ever say that again. No mortal can compete against Athena. Take back your words and kindly ask for forgiveness. With this, Arachne got furious and threw the thread against the old woman, telling her, I don't need your advice. If I can't do it, I won't say I can. If Athena is sure of her skills, she should show up for the competition. On hearing this, the old woman transformed herself back to goddess Athena, and at once people had already gathered around them, waiting for the competition. So the competition started right away. Both contestants were doing really well at first. Athena was weaving the Parthenon, which was her temple, while Arachne was making fun of the gods by weaving scenes of gods full of weaknesses and fears. Arachne's work was perfect, but not beautiful because it was an insult to the gods. When Athena saw this, she became very offended and told Arachne, You are foolish and stubborn. Go ahead now and spend forever. Immediately she said this, Arachne transformed into a small and ugly animal, which is known as the spider nowadays. Since then, the spider is caused to be trapped inside her own web, weaving constantly and endlessly, but having all her works destroyed by humans. Benin was one of the earliest African societies to have relationships with the Europeans. Just like other African societies, they were fetish people and known to be engaging in series of human sacrifice. Because of this, their relationship with the British government started deteriorating and the British government warned them several times against this. One day, the British Arctic Council, then Robert Phillips, decided to pay a visit to Benin. The king sent his chiefs to welcome them and ask why they've come. But due to the grudge they have developed for the British in the past, the chiefs went with their warriors, attacked and killed the British officials, but two of them managed to escape. When the news of what happened reached the king, he was troubled and he blamed the chiefs for it, knowing that surely an act like this is going to have a reward. They are also aware that the British have heavy guns and explosives. They had to consult the Oracle, and the Oracle promised to save them, but on conditions that they sacrifice about 200 humans. That was a minor thing to them, so they did it. The humans were tied down and their stomachs were cut open alive and left to die slowly. So in 1897, Rear Admiral Harry Rawson was appointed to capture and destroy Benin City, and soon the war started. The war was fought when the day was bright. It was fought at the darkest hour of the night, when a child must not cry for food. At the end, the gods couldn't save Benin, as Benin was destroyed. It was not only destroyed, it was looted. Many bronze statues were carted away, including the bronze images of the gods. Shango is the god of thunder in Yoruba, Nigeria, just like Thor in Norse. Shango, when he was a king, he had two regents, namely Timi and Gunka, who were warriors. Soon, they grew strong and only obey Shango's order when they like. 
So Shongo decided to punish them by sending them to guard the city's border. Timmy obeyed Shongo's order this time, but Gonka refused to go, and this troubled Shongo, who felt the presence of Gonka was a threat to his throne. So he was advised by Oya, his wife, to set Timmy and Gonka up in order to eliminate each other. So to achieve this, he sent Gonka to go and capture Timmy at a day. Gonka obeyed and at the end, he brought Timmy captured. Shongo was not happy with the outcome, so he claimed the whole thing was staged and ordered for another fight at the town square. At the end of the second fight, Gonka was victorious again, so Shongo ordered that Gonka should be killed immediately. Gonka was able to escape the scene, but he soon returned to give Shongo an ultimatum to vacate the throne. After Shongo received this message, he went to look for the stone he uses to cause thunder, but he couldn't find it, so he asked it from Oya, who has been using it secretly with him. When Oya gave it to him, it was stained with menstrual blood. Shongo thought it would not work again, so he climbed to a nearby mountain and tested it. The stone brought out a powerful thunder that engulfed the whole of his palace with fire. When Shongo saw what he had caused, he was sad, so he took a rope, started walking towards a jungle, and some chiefs followed him, begging him not to commit suicide. Since he didn't heed to their advice, they went back to the village telling people that Shongo has committed suicide. And as they said it, their houses were burning down. When the people discovered that the house of whoever made the statement burns down, they changed it and started saying Shongo Olukoso, which means Shongo didn't commit suicide. And so it becomes part of Shongo's name today. No one knows whether he really commits till today, but he was made to vacate his throne and burn his own palace.